In the summer of 1972, Richard Nixon had brought the war in Vietnam to an end, had achieved a diplomatic breakthrough with the Russians, had been the first Western leader to visit the People's Republic of China, and presided over a period of economic stability at home. His approval ratings matched Kennedy's. None of his political opponents could lay a finger on him, and he was about to be re-elected with the largest landslide in recent political history. But then he tried to cover up a third-rate burglary. Good evening. This is the 37th time I have spoken to you from this office where so many decisions have been made that have shaped the history of our nation. Aeschylus and his Greek contemporaries believed that the gods begrudged human success and would send a curse of hubris on a person at the height of their powers, a loss of sanity that would eventually bring about their downfall. Nowadays, we tend to give the gods less credit. We prefer to call it self-destruction. Therefore, I shall resign the presidency, effective at noon tomorrow. But instead of the satisfaction I imagined I would feel, I just got angry. And angry because there was no admission of guilt, no apology. Little did I know then that I would one day be part of the team that would try to elicit that apology. I've had an idea, John. And that that team would be led by the most unlikely of white knights. Rather a bold idea. A man with no political convictions. For an interview. Indeed, a man who had probably never voted in his life. Who is it? But he had one big advantage over all of us. Richard Nixon. He understood television. Decide whether it's in the best interest of the nation and do something illegal. I'm saying that when the president does it, that means it's not illegal. <laughs> 